This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Avoid the Maze. And as you all know, or maybe you don't, because maybe this is your first time listening, we talk about a journey, because we're all on a journey. And today, my guest is Justin Schneck. I hope I said it right. It's Shank. You were close. Shank. Everybody okay. says Shank. Story okay. of my life. Okay. I'm going to change the spelling so I can do it right. Uh, Justin Shank. And Justin and I were just talking about his journey just briefly because I try not to know too much about my guest beforehand because I want to learn along with my audience. And Justin hit a dark moment in his life. We all hit those dark moments, but it's up to each of us to determine how we are going to move forward. So, Justin, welcome to New Cleveland Radio and Avoid the Maze. And uh, tell us a little bit about your journey. Hey, Karen. First, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat with you for the next however long we have together. And, Absolutely. Uh, talk, talk about all that stuff. And, and, and like you said, right, like I'm a big believer that the rock bottom moment in anybody's life is the catalyst for greatness. Uh, the part that we miss is that we choose when our rock bottom moment is. Uh, and so many people really don't define their rock bottom moment. And they just hit rock bottom moment after rock bottom moment after rock bottom moment until unfortunately it could end their life. And, you know, that idea and that, that, that whole premise of like choosing a rock bottom moment came from watching my mom, my whole entire life battle opioids. And she thought that there was no hope. Uh, and that's what ended up taking her life six years ago, six plus years ago now. And it was really that idea of like, she never saw that there was hope beyond where, how she felt in that very moment. She would not define her rock bottom moment until unfortunately it took her life. And I, I watched her battle back and forth since, since I was 12 years old with opioids and, and really trying to, to figure out why she didn't feel like she fit in this world. And so what I like to say is my mom didn't die from, a, a, from drugs. My mom died because she didn't love herself. And what ended up happening for me was once, and so this is the crazy thing, when my mom passed away, uh, that was my dark time, right? I went to three month bender where I got blackout drunk six nights a week and I was escaping the pain of, of grief and all the things that come with it. And finally, I woke up one day and decided enough was enough. And I decided to kind of feel the pain and, and work through it. Uh, and the big realization for me was, wow, my mom didn't love herself. And she went through this entire battle. And I woke up and I said, well, I don't love myself either. And so why is that? And how do you really start to, to build yourself back up? And obviously that ended up becoming the heart of my podcast, The Growth Now Movement, where I've been able to interview celebrities and thought leaders and billionaires and all the, the most incredible human beings in the world. And we talk about those rock bottom moments and how did you find hope there? And I always like to say the first two, year of the, two years of the podcast, every single question that was asked was for me. This was my guidebook. This was my teacher. This was so much for me to kind of get out of my my sadness, my depression, all the things that come with, with, you know, not feeling like there's hope uh, and then really discovering what it is I was bringing to the world and, and stepping into that and taking action and really moving forward from there. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think most of us who are podcasting and there are millions of us. So, <laughs> you know, when somebody says, Hey, how popular is your podcast? My comment is it's as popular as the last person who listened to it. Um, mm. because we have all those choices, but I do believe most of us are certainly on a personal mission with our podcast. It's about something that really identifies us. Um, I too started my podcasting based on the fact that I had hit my rock bottom and, uh, I didn't want to be there. And my first reaction was, I think the only way that I can get out of this is if I talk about it. And if I talk about it and maybe hear Justin's story, maybe I can find a commonality and say, wow, okay, if he can do it, I could do it. Um, and it doesn't mean we're going to do it the same way. So I appreciate, you know, you sharing that. I also want your listeners and our listeners to know that the word for 2022 is hope. And there is hope. Um, but I'm sure when you woke up that one morning and said, I don't want to live this way anymore. You probably didn't know exactly what hope looked like. Am I correct? A hundred percent. Yeah. You know, hope's a funny thing. Um, 
because we sometimes hope drives us deeper into the depression that we're in. Uh, because we see this vision for ourselves and we don't think that it's realistic. We don't think that we could attain that. We don't think that we're deserving of that, you know, and, and through my, my, you know, the last five years where I've been coaching people and helping them, we have these conversations a lot of like, are we worthy of the things that we dream about? And most people feel like they're not. Uh, and certainly in that moment where I was starting to snap out of my depression, uh, I didn't know what hope was. I just knew it wasn't where I want, where I was then, right? Like I knew it wasn't that day where I woke up and I felt like there was nothing going for me. And so I began to put in the work. And the one thing I realized is that nothing works unless you do. Uh, you know, the world isn't here to save me. Um, that is a, that's for dang sure. And you have to be able to put in the work. And, and this is something that, that I think most people, even high achievers that I get to talk to and currently myself, like we deal with that too, right? We still have these big dreams, these big goals beyond where we are now. And I'm very happy with where I am now. My life's fantastic, but uh, it's really about, okay, that next thing, well, that's not going to happen unless I put in the work. The hardest thing to do though, when we're in that rock bottom moment is to take action. And so what I always say is, What's one thing you can do today to change the narrative internally, right? Whether that's meditation, whether that's, you know, talking to yourself in the mirror in a positive way, whether that's, you know, going and walking around the block or something as simple as getting showered and dressed that day. What's the one thing you can do to really begin to move the needle to prove to yourself that you are worthy of something better than how you're feeling right now? Uh, and so, yeah, sometimes you don't know what the end goal looks like. You don't really know where you want to go, but you know, you don't want to be where you are. And so it's really about just taking that one step to make yourself feel a little bit better that day. That's really going to begin to change the narrative for you. Uh, what seems like pretty quickly. I mean, the last, you think six years is a long time when you really think about it, but it's not either, right? It's a blink of an eye. And when I look at my life six years ago compared to where it is now, um, I mean, it's a, I'm a completely different person. My world is a completely different world. You know, I, I was an employee then. And now I have my own business and I speak all over the country and I host my own events. And these things that I subconsciously dreamt about because I refused to say them out loud because I thought it was ridiculous to say, uh, I'm now living that life. And it's because of that one moment, that one day that I said, okay, I'm going to do one thing today to change something in my life. Uh, and everything else began to kind of kind of uh, fall on, it, on itself, kind of like dominoes, right? Absolutely. And you know, so many of us think that we have to wait till tomorrow there's always a tomorrow that's going to be better for us to start. We make excuses. Um, I have a full-time job. I have to work it. How can I do something that really makes me feel good? And I went through that myself for a very, very long time. I was working in corporate America. I was trying to prove myself. So instead of working 40 hours, I was working 60 hours. And when people would ask me, you know, what did I like in life? I had no idea. I was just moving. I was on this treadmill that was going nowhere. Um, and when I hit my rock bottom, very much like you, um, I knew I didn't like it there. You know, it was like, I don't like staying in bed. I like getting up, getting showered, getting dressed, putting my makeup on. Um, but then I'd say, but why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. And the first time when I said, I'm doing it for me, not my husband, not my son, not my neighbors. Um, it was like a revelation. And that's when I could take that step after step. I also hear something that you're saying that when you were at your rock bottom, you didn't think you deserved anything, which most of us, when we're there, that's how we feel. Um, and the reality of it is, if nothing else, we deserve the chance to take a breath, mm. if you start with that breath, that can cleanse us completely. So the changes you made sound very drastic. Mm. You went from drinking to not drinking. How, how does somebody do that? Because that's sort of a crutch that we hold on to. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a really good question. So I will say this, I still have drinks oh, I, <laughs> on yeah. occasion. So, um, so I don't want to paint that picture, but um, right. But from, I, I don't get blackout drunk six right. nights a week anymore. Uh, and so for me, it was, I had accountability. And I think one thing that we do when we're in those moments is we're afraid to talk to people about where we're at. And I had a coach at the time who was actually, she was a relationship and spiritual coach for me. And she was really my accountability to make sure that I wasn't numbing the pain. 
she allowed me to numb the pain for a while because sometimes that's okay. Um, and then she called me the one day and she's like, what are you doing tonight? And I said, I'm going out with some friends. And she goes, no, you're not. Uh, she said, you're going to sit down and you're going to feel this tonight. Uh, and that night was probably the worst night of my life. I mean, that was when I truly felt the emotion of losing my mom and going through it and, and all these other things. But what I did was I put in checks and balances in my life to make sure that I didn't end up where I was before. Right. Uh, I, I talk all the time about when I was a kid, 14, 15, 16 years old, my mom was battling opioids. My dad was in jail for a couple of years. And um, I don't, I didn't know what I wanted in my life. I just knew I didn't want that. And I think just knowing that you didn't want something is enough to, like you said, take that action. Um, but again, you have to surround yourself with the right people. If you're not surrounding yourself with the right people, uh, you're not going to get to where you want to be. You're going to remain exactly where you are. Um, sometimes that means getting rid of the people you're surrounding yourself with now. Uh, but you want to be really, really intentional with where, who am I sharing space with? Right? Who am I sharing this information with? Am I sharing this with somebody who's going to enable, it, enable me or somebody who's going to empower me? And that's really the biggest difference that I had in my life. I went from hanging out with people who were enabling me to people who were empowering me. And it was such a drastic shift in my life because I couldn't fall back on my laurels because now I had people depending on me. I had people cheering me on. I had people really supporting me and pushing me to be a better person because they saw the greatness within me before I saw it in myself. Uh, and that's such a huge shift. Uh, and sometimes you have to pay somebody to do it. And I paid somebody at one point right now. I've, and I still have coaches now and uh, belong to, to masterminds and stuff like that. But, but it's really about what's that circle you're keeping right now and really do a check and balance in your life right now of going, is this circle enabling me or empowering me? And be honest with yourself. Uh, because I think the biggest thing we need to do is we need to get comfortable being uncomfortable in our lives. Uh, and once we do that, everything changes. It's so much easier to reach the goals that you want because in order to grow, you have to get uncomfortable. You know, so you talk about coaching and one of the regular podcasts we do on New Cleveland Radio is the Intentionality Gurus. Um, Candace Pollack is a personal coach and she has many certifications. Uh, and I love doing the show with her because uh, I become her guinea pig mm -hmm. and um, it has helped me grow. It's helped me understand life much, much better. Um, and in fact, it has now put me in a situation that I too am going to start taking online classes for coaching. Don't know if I'm going to become certified or not, but I want to really, I want to be very mindful of what I say and do. And I want to be mindful of those around me. And when you talk about, sometimes we have to leave a group behind and find a new group. That's, that's terrifying. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, this is all I know, but it's not good for me. And I don't know this over here, but it certainly looks better for me. Um, and it's difficult. So you had to trust your gut, first of all, correct? Yeah, yeah. So six years ago, even though coaching was popular, it's not like it is today. I mean, coaching is, is the key to, uh, I really think, finding yourself. What made you do coaching rather than actual therapy? So I, I did have a therapist as well. Okay. So, okay. Okay. so I did both. Um, and, and actually what, what got me out of that was really a collection of both. The catalyst moment was with my coach and, and some of the exercise, exercises I did was with my therapist. Um, the funny thing is six years later, I'm actually really good friends with my therapist. Tim and I just grabbed a drink uh, towards the end of the year, which was, which was a ton of fun. And it was like this weird kind of evolution, but it shows me when, when he ended up reaching out to me a couple of years after we were done doing the thing, he's like, Hey, let's, let's grab a, I think we would grab lunch the first time. Uh, it was this cool kind of like nod to the growth that I had in my life. Um, cause I think sometimes when, when you're in it and you're taking the actions and you're doing the things, it doesn't seem like this grandiose thing right now. Obviously if I look back, where I was to where I am now, it's, it's pretty grandiose. But as you're doing it day by day, you're like, okay, it's just, just one more thing on top of everything else, right? I'm a big believer in growing 1% every single day. What's that one thing I can do to, to change my life 1%, just a, a small amount. Um, and that's really what I've focused on over the last six years. And probably what I'll focus on for the next 60 years is, you know, changing 1% every, or growing 1% every single day. The one thing I realized talking to most people in the world, 
and and I'm sure you you uh, agree with me. But the world's crazy right now. Oh, like yeah. it is. Uh, it is divided. It is me versus you. It is all these crazy things that are, that's happening in the world. But I only say that because I believe within every single person, there's somebody who's really, really good. There's a good person in there and they all want to help others. That's, I think, is such a, a, a connection between human beings. We all, we all want to serve. We all want to help others, all these things. But I realized a long time ago that you can't pour from an empty cup. And I realized that being selfish is the most selfless thing you can do, right? You talk about, I'm going to invest my time and my resources into this coaching program. That's you being selfish, in that time to say, this is my time. This is my resource. This is what I want to do in order to serve in the future. Because right. again, we can't pour from an empty cup. And so I think, you know, more than anything, as I, I kind of go through the Rolodex of the people I've been able to interview and the things that I've learned, um, the common denominator behind all the successful people that I admire and I've become friends with is that uh, they love serving, but they make sure they take care of themselves first. And that was a huge missing piece for me because I always wanted to help. I was always the shoulder to cry on. I was always going out of my way for other people, but I had nothing to give. I was serving on empty. And so the big shift for me, which really changed my life, was being able to make sure I take care of myself first. So there's things I do every single day uh, to make sure that my cup is full. And then after that, I can serve others. And so uh, I, I love the fact that you're taking your time and your resources to do that. And I encourage everybody, uh, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's a coach or program, you know, an online course, whatever it is, you know, invest in yourself and be selfish for a bit in order to be selfless long term. Well, you know, it's interesting because um, <clears throat> the majority of my life, um, I believed if I made everybody happy, I was going to be happy. That was the message that I got from my mother and father. I remember on my wedding night, my grandmother came to me and said, you be the happy one and your husband will always be happy. Mm -hmm. um, and four years into my first marriage, realizing that my husband wasn't happy, but I was trying to make him happy all the time. What was wrong with me? And so I got on that kick for a long time. And those voices every once in a while come back if I see that I'm not getting what I need out of a relationship. And I finally had to say to myself, even if there's something wrong with me, I've got to learn from it. It's okay that there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you sort of saw too, you know? Okay. So, you know, going out and getting drunk, that, that's not a good thing. Um, how can I change this? I don't want to change it a hundred percent. Like you said, I still want to enjoy a drink. I still want to be social. So you put those limits on it and you became, you, I also believe that you probably shared that with your support system so that they can help you as well, because we all can stumble and fall yeah. and having a support system is important. Yeah. And, you know, especially as men, you know, we're, we're taught that you shouldn't be weak and you shouldn't have to ask for help and you shouldn't have to do all these things. And, and I, I would say more the opposite, right? Like find the people that want you to ask for help. And when you, when they say, how's everything going and you, your response is everything's fine. I want them to dig a little bit deeper and go, no, what's really going on. Right. And that, Cause not everything's fine all the time. And, and that's okay too. You know, you said so many great things in that, in that little bit there, right? Like you talk about these limiting beliefs that we have um, and these limiting beliefs of like, I, you know, I'm the person who's supposed to make everybody happy, but you know, I need to do that to be happy. And that's a limiting belief, right? Or I'm supposed right. to be this person because I, you know, my, my parents said so or whatever. And I've actually done a deep dive over the last two years on limiting beliefs and started to really kind of look into where do these come from? Like, why do I, why do I still have these nagging thoughts at times that I'm not enough or I can't be physically fit all the time or I can't whatever. And I was like, where did where do limiting beliefs even come from? And I realized they come from four different places. One is your childhood, right? Like you said, your parents right. saying that, you know, make everybody else happy and then therefore you'll be happy. Uh, your childhood is huge and it could be something as passive. By the way, your parents did that from love. It had oh, nothing to absolutely. do with, with whatever. Yeah. And, and, and I know you know that, but a lot of people think that like, oh, my parents damaged me. They were the worst. But our parents were trying to figure out life just like we are now, right? Right. And so it's like this crazy thing to, to wrap your head around. But yeah, I mean, it could be as simple as your parents saying that you were a shy child and therefore you carry that the rest of your life. 
Um, the second place it comes from is society. Society says, hey, you're a woman, you can't do something specific, or hey, you're a minority, you can't do that, or hey, you, your parents grew up an addict and in jail, you can't be successful. That's what society says. That's another place it comes from. The third place is our own negative self-talk. That first time as a child, you went and asked a girl out or a guy out on a date and they said no. And you start talking in the mirror, man, you're ugly, man, you're not good enough. Wow, nobody's ever gonna love you. All that negative self-talk you start to say to yourself. And then the fourth place is a the subconscious. There are things in our life that have happened to us, unfortunately, that a lot of times we tuck them away. We don't remember them, um, but they're still there in our brain. And the energy that's, that's shooting around in our brain, it remembers it. And so we carry that with us. And, and really the, the, the thing that we need to do, do in our life to make a massive shift is to do the work to figure out where do these limiting beliefs come from and then work through the process of overcoming them. Uh, and I've, I've developed a three-step process to overcome any limiting belief, which is, it's really simple, but not easy. Uh, and, and I'll share them if you'd like. Absolutely. Like I said, it's, it's, it's really, really simple. So the first step is uh, you have to get uncomfortable. Again, being uncomfortable uh, or getting comfortable being uncomfortable, right? So you commit to something big, you know, do something drastic, do something that's going to make you feel a little uncomfortable, get your heart rate up. Uh, the second thing is surround yourself with the right people. Are these people helping you or are they hurting you? And you have to be honest with yourself in that assessment. And then the third thing is take action because nothing works unless you do. And these are all, these are all things that I had said in this interview already, but when you put them together in a three-step process, it always makes sense. And I'll share a story with you to kind of put it in a real life context. The beginning of last, the, the end of 2020, uh, just like most people at the end of the pan or the, the end of the first year of the pandemic, I went, wow, I've gained some weight and I'm the heaviest I've been in a really, really long time. And I need to figure this out. But then I started to look at my life and I said, this has been the story of my life. Lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight. And I was like, why can't I really figure out how to just stay active, how to stay fit? And um, I went back into the Rolodex of my life and I went back to when I was 12 years old and I had broken my hip and I couldn't play sports anymore. You know, I know you said your, your son loves baseball. I played baseball as a kid um, growing up and I loved it. And then I broke my hip and I couldn't play anymore. Wow. And I started to gain weight. And I remember a moment, the moment where the doctor was like, okay, cool, you're going to start walking again, right? After being on crutches in a wheelchair for nine months. And my mom said, well, what can't he do? And he goes, well, he can pretty much do anything, but he's never going to be an athlete. And it was something as simple as that sentence. He's never going to be an athlete that I took with me to where I would self-sabotage every time I'd start to get fit. And I'd start to eat a little, eat junk or have one too many beers or whatever it is. And I really began to self-sabotage. And I realized that's where that limiting belief came from. And so I was like, I need to overcome this. And so the beginning of 2021, I did something called 75 hard. So I got uncomfortable. 75 hard is a 75 day challenge. You have to do two 45 minute workouts, one outside, one inside um, every single day, gallon of water, no cheat meals, no alcohol, 10 pages of a book every single day for 75 days straight. So I said, I'm going to commit to this. I told my podcast audience, which is a hundred countries plus a week. And I said, I'm doing this thing. And then the second thing was I surrounded myself with the right people. So my girlfriend did it with me, uh, which was great. And my support system, and she pushed me through. And then the third thing was I took action. I went out and I did it and I got physically fit. And I'm proud to say through 2021, I worked out more in 2021 than I'd ever worked out in my life. I never self-sabotage to say, I'm not good enough to go work out today. I'm not, you know, all these things. And so actually, as we have this, uh, I'm 17 days into my second round of 75 hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, just enjoying the process, but it was really about overcoming that simple limiting belief that was really holding me back in so many things in my life. And, and anybody's able to take that three-step process and overcome. And, you know, it's interesting that you talk about limiting beliefs. So you got yourself healthier in 2021, 2021, I've, I've faced a number of medical issues. Nobody seems to know what they are being treated for. God knows what, but one of the medications I've been put on has blown me up like a balloon and it did it basically overnight. And, uh, I was looking in the mirror one morning before a podcast, putting on my makeup and it was like, Oh, I, I'm, how can I do this podcast today? You know, I don't look like me. And I said something to my husband and he looked at me and he said, honey, you're beautiful. You can do it. And I thought, well, that's you. But I did get on and I did it. And as you know, because I record in Zoom, I have to look at myself and I made that decision. Look at, I'm getting healthy because we're working on these issues. In the meantime, 
this is who I am. I, I can't change that 100% right now, but I can stay active, which I am, so that maybe when one of these medications you know, is taken off my list, it will all fall away. But even if it doesn't, okay, as long as I can do the things that make me happy, reach out to people, and take care of me. And like you said, that's self-time. 10 years ago, I never would have believed it. I would have looked in the mirror, I would have cried, and I would have said, no more podcasts until I look like I'm supposed to look. This is who I am today. And that's what I want our listeners to hear. We have to start judging. We have to stop judging ourselves and judging each other. You know, if, if Justin, you were to say to me, you know, I decided that, you know, alcohol was going to be part of my podcast and you were doing a great podcast. If that's who you are and that's what you want to do, it's not up to me to change that. But if you wake up one morning and say, you know what? No, this is not who I want to be anymore. I want to be this better version of myself. That's okay. Once we stop judging each other, I think we can see ourselves more clearly. Yeah, you know, I, I love that you said that. And, and there's so much wisdom in what you just said, right? To, to be able to show up. And I realize that um, we have to stop worrying about the things we can't control. And that tends to be the issue for most people. Like you said, it's medication who, that, that is, you know, that you blew up and all these things. And by the way, I, I did some research before we hopped on this call. Are you, se- you 71 years old? Yes, I am. Yeah, there's no way that I would ever <laughs> think that if I didn't read that, there's no way I would have ever thought that. Let's, I just wanted to put that out there really quick. Well, um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mind blo- I, I would have assumed 50. <laughs> right, like we're talking twenty years difference, which is which is unbelievable. Um, but but yeah, we we have to let go of the things we can't control, including other people and their actions and the things that they they do. Uh, but more importantly, what you were saying about like you know how do we how are we talking to ourselves? How are we treating ourselves? Um, we treat other people so much nicer than we treat ourselves. Oh yes, uh, and it's like this weird thing, right? Like like your husband saying, "Oh, you're beautiful, go do it," and you, "Oh, that's just you." Well, why can't we talk to ourselves like that? And it's really about the shift. And it's very uncomfortable at first when we begin this process. It's very, very uncomfortable. It's something that I struggle with still to this day. But, you know, to really begin to make that shift, we have to talk to ourselves like we would talk to somebody else. Like, what are you saying in your mind right now? Or, oh, I'm not good enough. Or I couldn't do that. Or, oh, Justin speaks better than I do. Or whatever. By the way, I grew up with a stutter. Like, there's no way in, in heck that I could should be doing what I'm doing. Um, I still mess up all the time. But the reality is, I go, I can st- I can do this, right? Like, I'm deserving of this. And so anybody listening to this can get, should go, I can do this too if this is something that you want to do. Yes. You know, and, and you had said something earlier in this interview about, like, I want people to see this and go, oh, I can do that too. That's something I say all the time. Like, I want, I, I want to... I started my own live event because I wanted to get on stage and I wanted people to see me on stage and go, well, if that idiot can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> uh, and so that's something that I really, really believe in is just showing up hundred percent, the best you can in that very moment, talk to yourself, like you love yourself. Uh, and you realize how much happier you are uh, at any given moment to not have to worry about those little things and to move forward and, and enjoy and embrace life for what it is. That's so beautiful. So thank you so much for sharing that. Well, you know, we have so much in common and that's the other thing that i want our listeners to see we're living in a world today where we we point out differences all the time you know i don't care if it's sexuality if it's religion you know if it's the culture but here we are two people difference in age male and female um totally different backgrounds and yet we share so much in common. And once we can start to see that, like you said, there is good in everybody. We have to just be mindful of it. You know, stop looking at what we might think is bad, but what we see is good, let's build on that. And one of the things that I remember telling my students when I was in corporate America, it was, what is the one thing that you can say that you like about yourself? Is it your eyes? Is it your hair? Is it something you wrote, something you created? There's got to be something. 
And if you can't think of it today, that's okay. Come back and see me tomorrow and tell me. And it made me search for that too. What is that one thing that I like? And when you start to do that, you now start to build this library of things that you like. So on those bad moments, you can go into that bag and pull it out and make it happen. And that's what I see you doing. And I'm looking at all those posters behind you, obviously of the many people that you've interviewed. And that has to be a great revelation every day to look at that wall and say, hey, look what I've accomplished. Yeah, you know, it, it, it really is. And I'll, I'll tell you the true revolution. Um, I started putting these people, and I've never said this out loud, by the way. I started putting these people on my wall to prove that I was worthy to interview that next person that I got on screen with to say, Hey, look what I've already done. Look at the chance that I've had, right? This, by the way, it started with, with nine images behind me. Um, there's probably about 50 or so now, and I've done over 400 interviews, but about 50 or so behind me now. Um, it started with, Hey, look, I am worthy of this. Look at all, look at all I've done. Uh, and so my mindset is now, I just think it's a cool background. It creates a really good story. It great, creates good conversation for me. Everybody compliments the wall. Um, but I said to myself, well, how do I highlight myself more on this wall? How do I showcase the things that I've actually done? Not the interviews I've had. And by the way, the interviews are life-changing for me and my listeners and so many people that will find them in the future. That's the cool thing about podcasting. These things will live forever. Right. Um, uh, but, but with that being said, the real growth is going the reason behind why I had it there at first to why I keep it up now is the real, is the real growth. I feel honored to have the conversations I had to have the friends that I have. Um, but really, I'm really grateful for the work that I've done in order to deserve the accolades, to deserve the businesses that I've built, to deserve the things that I've, I've been able to do. Um, and that's the real shift to when you start to acknowledge the things that you've done and who you've become, that's the real shift in loving yourself. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I love this wall. This wall will always be this. Uh, and actually it's funny because all the images that I have on here is like the old designs that I use. My branding has changed so much over time, but, but you know, it's, it's really about continuing to grow and continue to be a better person. And for me, the real growth is internal, right? You can see the business growth. You can see the event growth. You can see the times I speak and this and that and the other thing. Um, but for me, the real growth is internal and the understanding that like, this is a cool wall for conversation. Uh, but, uh, I, I want to go, how do I showcase myself more? Cause I'm pretty damn proud of the things that I've done. And I couldn't have said that a year or two ago. Like that's the, that's the God's honest truth. Um, and I want everybody to be able to go. I'm really proud of the things that I've done and they don't have to be grand. They don't have to be these massive things. They don't have to be this huge podcast and everything else in between, but it's really about how do I show up best for myself in that very moment? Absolutely. So how can our listeners find you? Yeah. So wherever they're listening to this show, they can go listen to the growth now movement. Uh, they can search growth now movement. It'll pop up. They can listen there. Uh, if, if they love the journey, come along with me and, and click the subscribe button if they'd like. Um, beyond that, Instagram is my favorite place to hang out. My username is at Justin T. Shank and they can find me there. Uh, and uh, if they, they want, they can message me and I'll, I'll, I'll respond back and we can chat. Well, I love it. And we're going to have to have you back on and maybe talk about some of the people's that you have interviewed the journeys that um, you've learned from, because, you know, we learn from each other. And I will tell you, I am going to be re-listening to this today because you said so many wonderful things that I need to take it in again. Oh, thank you so much. I would, I'd be honored to be back on and talk about whatever you want to talk about. About. Well, I've, I've truly loved this conversation and connecting I, with you. So thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great day and stay warm on this cold winter day. Take care now. I appreciate Bye -bye. it. Thanks. See ya. Bye.